One of the things that we're, we're working on at IC Manage is um, exploitation of big data um, in the EDA and, and chip design realm. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and then we'll jump into the panel um, discussions. Um, so you've probably all heard a little bit about big data in the news and the newspapers, how it's affecting different things. Some interesting statistics, 90% of all of the data that exists in the world today was created in the past two years. Okay, and so in the past two years, there has been a tremendous shift in the world where we are starting to keep, record, catalog, and organize a lot more of the data that goes flying through primarily the internet. Okay, and that data explosion has caused a whole development of what we call big data. Um, Gartner actually predicts that by uh, 2014, 2015, there will be over 4.4 million jobs alone that will be created in handling and managing big data. The companies that are doing the big data analytics um, are 2x more likely to have um, top quartile performance and 5x uh, more likely to make decisions faster than the competitors. These are two interesting facts that I think are going to come to bear in, uh, in the chip design, semiconductor, SOC design world. Um, what is big data analytics? Okay, you can kind of take a look at the academic uh, definitions or kind of the familiar definitions. It really boils down to four things. Okay, the first is capture massive amounts of data that are being generated. In the EDA world, that means capturing all the simulation runs, every tool run, everything that you do. Put it into a very accessible storage system, okay, and that's not tape. All right, that's basically a, a disk drive system that allows you to get access to the data, index it, um, and do things with it. The third step is basically be able to extract things from it, okay, organize it, and index it. And then the fit, fourth is basically do analytics on it and visualization so that you can learn lessons from it. And, you know, as you all know, <coughs> these applications are changing a lot of things in the world. Okay, in the biomedical and disease world, okay, we're getting new insights as we can get the data and analyze it. Okay, every internet site of, of significant size is doing a tremendous amount of work to understand the traffic patterns of the people coming and visiting those sites. The shopping sites are using it to basically predict and better um, operate and to sell more. Um, you know, Vinod Kosla came out, um, you know, one of the most famous VCs in Silicon Valley, probably of all time, basically with a, a, a position that says, you know, big data analytics um, is going to be better than doctors. Um, and, you know, there's truth in that. You know, if you can actually look at the statistics over the six billion people on the planet and start to analyze that, you're probably going to get better insight than an individual doctor who's looked at a few hundred patients can give you. Um, one of my favorite uh, big data application examples is um, a startup um, that's basically tackling the weather problem. So conventional weather modeling usually, you know, allows you to predict out around 10 days using sophisticated, you know, computer-based techniques. Um, there's a new startup that took 60 years of weather data, okay, which is a tremendous amount of data, okay, and basically started crunching on it. Um, and now they are actually able to predict the weather out 40 days in advance okay, with over 70% accuracy, okay, that's the kind of things that you can start to do with big data, um, and I think it's going to change almost every industry um, on earth, it's already started to do that, and I don't think that um, EDA or semiconductor design, SOC design is going to be any different. So um, where, where can we get the most benefit from using big data? Um, in SOC and semiconductor design. In today's chip development, it takes a long time to make design a chip, and it costs a lot of money because that's manpower, time, energy that goes into it. Um, there is a lot of things that we could optimize and basically elements that could come into the semiconductor design. Everything from, you know, how do I allocate the resources, what engineers are working on what, 
to, you know, how do I do yield optimization and figure out yield defects. In the previous panel, we just had a short discussion about how one company is using a bunch of big data analytics to actually find yield defects and locate the area where the, the defects are and then do something about it. You know, <coughs> verification suite coverage, all kinds of applications. I'm not going to go through every one of these, but you get an idea that there's a number of places that we could apply big data analytics to basically get better designs more quickly. So, um, how do you get prepared for this? Okay, one of the things is is that you know we're just figuring out how to use these new analytical tools and these new big data uh, methods to analyze the data in EDA. How do you what do you, what do you do now? Okay, the big data analytics don't work if you don't have any data. Okay, and so you want to actually start to save some of the data off now at a reasonable um, cost and a reasonable methodology. So there are two things that I kind of that I can share with you now. You know, we're working on a bunch of big data analytics stuff at um, IC Manage. Um, it's early. You know, we don't know exactly how it's going to play out. We think there's going to be tremendous value in it. But there's two things that I can share uh, with you today. One is, is that you want to save your design and verification results data, okay? Your simulation data, your synthesis run data, whatever you've run or created, you really want to save all of those result files. You know, those files that have traditionally gone into the slash temp directory and that you get rid of pretty quickly because they're big and kind of painful to keep around. But you don't want to just keep them and throw them into a um, big data dumpster, um, as someone coined the term earlier today, um, you actually want to save them with um, context, okay? Because when you start to do these big data analytics, you need to know what change number was this design in, what portion of the design was this simulation run, what part of the hierarchy was this um, simulation attempting to attack, okay, when you save that data. So that six months, a year, two years from now, when you actually try and go and run the big data analytics and see what your trends are, so that you can optimize your engineers and say, oh, you know, this happened then, so we need to change it in this new design and do it this way, you can actually understand and draw those correlations. There's a, a number of companies, at least one, um, two actually, um, who are actually starting to save this data and actually starting to run analytics on um, what they're doing so that they can better optimize yield, so that they can better optimize how they're allocating engineers, so that they can figure out how to get the designs to tape out more quickly. Um, and if you look at it, you know, the big players, the winners, are going to be doing this type of stuff in the long run. So, the data comes before the analytics, okay? If you don't got no data, you ain't going to get no analytics, okay? so. The point is, is start capturing the data in context today, okay? Get it into some storage system that's accessible, okay? And extractable. And then, you know, relatively soon down the road, we're going to have a way to get analytics on it and actually extract really useful things so that you can be better, faster, and stronger at getting chips out the door.